All right, so I'm getting the anemometer torn down. I'm going to build a little base to build a uh, simulator for the autopilot system. I've got my linear actuator in. It's a 12 inch stroke actuator with uh, 150 pounds of force, which is way more than I need, but it's a cheap Amazon one with some position feedback. So it's got a potentiometer built in. Uh, will give me some position feedback as well, which I need for the autopilot that I'm uh, programming at the moment. So, anyway, I'm going to build a simulator with this and uh, see how it goes. So, I needed a couple parts on the 3D print, which I'll show you guys as well, and then uh, hook it up, see if it works, and then we'll kind of go over the, uh, the app and the coding. Anna and this is Ignacio. We along with our daughter Elena and our pup Bay are the new salt selling crew. We are DIYers with a growing appetite for big adventure. Our goal is to DIY and trade our way up to a blue water worthy boat and set sail on an adventure by sea. We are new to selling and plan to develop our selling skills along the way. Subscribe to stay up to date with our progress and adventures. Got this uh, broke all the way down as far as I need it anyway. So now I'm going to make my elbow, which will uh, the plan is to have this come down around and over and then to a, a disc. Uh, on that disc is where this uh, linear actuator will connect, and then the simulator I can basically set my autopilot at this wind heading. And then, if like say I changed it to here, the uh, the actuator should turn it to where this is pointing in the right direction, uh, similar to the way it would be turning the rudder to turn the boat into the right direction. So this would just be, you know, a, uh, a way to test my PID controller for the autopilot so that it will uh, simulate what will be happening on the boat. Um, obviously, the boat will have a much slower reaction time than this since this is direct from the actuator to this, but um, it'll at least give me a good idea of where my programming needs to be. Got little in and I help me drive. And a mom. Call those calipers. Calipers are calipers. No, you can't put them in your mouth. Alright, so I got the first piece done for my simulator. I made a mistake and didn't add infill to this uh, this base plate, so the, the top layer sagged into the, the first layer whenever it printed. I think it'll be okay for, for testing, but if not, I'll, uh, I'll reprint it. We'll see how it comes apart, and then we'll uh, 
we'll make our stud base and the two pins to, to keep this actuator cylinder in place and then we'll start assembling it. Seems to be working now. Uh, I'll probably still print another one because this is pretty flimsy, but for the time being, I'll leave it alone. I'm going to print my stud, which will hold this up at the correct offset for this actuator. Basically, it'll hold it an inch off the uh, off the base, which I'll I'll mount this and this to a two by four or two by six. So. That way the actuator can control the uh, the pivoting of this, this piece. So. You ready to go print? Let's go print this thing. Are you ready to go print it? Can you sit? Sit. All right, so we're uh, hanging out at my parents' place for a little while during this coronavirus thing. Um, I am working on the simulator for the wind vane autopilot. So I've got all my 3D printed components here, my actuator, and now I'm going to cut a board to mount all this to, and then uh, we'll get everything together and kind of start tinkering with the programming. So, Alright, so this is put together, we've got a good rotation here, as you can see this is, uh, the height is just about perfect, there's just a slight gap. So now I'm going to print some sort of pin or see if I can find a screw or a bolt that will work for that. Um, and then uh, I'll need to bolt the other end of this down and also I'll, I'll just use a cutoff wheel and cut the, the bottom of the screw off. So that gives me a nice smooth rotation. Uh, smooth enough for what I'm trying to do. It's only going to be able to rotate about you know, maybe 120 degrees or so without contacting this, this base piece with the rod. Um, that becomes a problem I'll print another one of these with a, a big contour in the middle so that the rod can extend further but uh, for testing I don't think it'll be necessary all right so I've got a socket head cap screw installed and it goes all the way through and I can just drop this off like so and reinsert it bring this around and then this screw will uh, hold the back end of the actuator and it will react off of that screw. It's alive. Much quieter than I was expecting. Like so, and then we'll see what kind of movement we can make of this thing. About as far as it'll go that direction. Alright, so I have my relay board wired. 
um, the ground is going to the normally closed circuit on both of these lines. So now whenever I fire the individual relay to either extend or retract, the, uh, the other side will always be grounded just by default. So um, you go ahead and fire one of these relays and see which direction it goes and then um, I'll mark it and I'll know which one's which. So now I've got 12 volt power. Should be able to fire one of these. All right, so that's retract, which is this relay here. And then this one should be extend. Cool, so now I know which one's which and uh, I can use that to program for the outputs of these two pins. So. All right, so I have everything set up and working on a proportional controller only. So it's not a PID controller currently, it's just proportional. Um, I'm still working on the PID portion, but I wanted to get something working and start tinkering with it. So what I have here is a Arduino Nano, a little uh, YW Robot relay pack, which honestly this could be anything, any sort of relay assembly. I have my anemometer coming in here. Uh, I mean, I'm not using, this is the wind sensor, the uh, wind speed. I'm not using it, although it is spinning for, uh, for this sketch, it's not being used. Um, by the way, for those of you who don't know, a sketch is the program that you write for the Arduino, um, which is this here. I'll, uh, I'll put a screenshot of this up so you can kind of see what's going on. But um, anyway, I have uh, the linear actuator, the base that we 3D printed yesterday, and the anemometer is now mounted to it. So um, we'll go ahead and plug this in, and I'll kind of walk you through how it works. Um, as before I put the power on, I'll go over. I don't have any switches set up right now. I can't go buy any because, uh, you know, we're all locked down and all. But anyway, I have these two pins. So pin 11 and pin 12 are my input pins uh, as far as controlling, like to initialize the autopilot. So this uh, pin 12 is actually the autopilot on and off. So as I plug this in and out, the autopilot actually engages and disengages. And the pin 12 is the set heading. So like say say you have the autopilot running, um, you disengage it, you want to change headings. So you turn the boat to the new heading, you'll engage this pin uh, 11, and then you'll turn on the autopilot by engaging pin 12. And obviously these will be buttons uh, actually on my tablet on the final version. But for right now for testing, uh, I'm just you know, using the jumper wires and putting them in the associated position. So anyway, um, here we go. I'll go ahead and plug the power in and I'll set you guys on the table over there so you can see me and see this going. And then uh, I'll put some uh, screen videos of the code and the uh, serial monitor running. All right, so I have just like a little 12 volt, uh, 120 volt to 12 volt converter that just goes into a cigarette lighter, which is this right here. So. I'll plug this in, so now this uh, actuator has power to this relay pack. And now say like this is this is what I want for my heading, so I'm going to disengage the uh, set pin. So that's pin 11. So the pin 11 is disengaged and now my autopilot is set to a heading of 85. And as you can see, as the uh, since the wind speed is very low with this fan I'm running, it'll uh, just adjust and keep its course. So, say for example, the boat changes headings a little bit. The uh, the actuator will move until the wind vane is pointed in the same orientation. So this doesn't necessarily mean you'll stay on the same track, but you will. The boat will always be pointed in the same direction relative to the wind. Um, another thing, like once this actuator is mounted on the boat, I'll have to reverse the outputs just because of the, the orientation where I mounted this, but that's not a big deal. It'll at least prove the concept and that the code is working. So, say the boat makes another heading shift. So, anyway, everything uh, it seems to be working. I have it set to where the 
input is plus or minus one. So there's a, a range of two degrees where this uh, anemometer can oscillate without uh, the actuator actually moving the boat. And that's just, I'll have to play with that value as well on the water because as the boat's moving in the water, we all know this isn't going to stay you know, rock solid on one point. So there has to be some degree of error allowed uh, to keep this thing from just running constantly. So um, I'll have to play with that. I don't know what a good value is right now. Right now I have it set at two and I think that's probably sufficient. It may actually be a little too tight. I may need to go to like three or four in the, you know, in the live version. But so I'm tinkering out with using the uh, a PID controller, which would also be programmed through the Arduino. Um, so that, that stands for a proportional integral derivative. And uh, basically it, it adjusts how fast the actuator is moving towards its target. And the closer it gets, it slows down so it doesn't overshoot. Um, I'm not sure it will be necessary, but I am tinkering around with that in the code. So I have both options and I'm going to test this thing on the water. Um, and this uh, actuator actually has a potentiometer output which will assist in that. So I can track the speed of the actuator at any given time. Um, which will let me use a PID control. The uh, I could use the wind vane as the uh, input to the PID control, as far as like tracking the speed, but it's going to have a little bit of a delayed reaction to the, uh, the actual tiller movement. So still figuring out how I want to handle that, but anyway, it is uh, it's in the works. So currently the serial monitor is uh, posting three things. One, every time it goes through the loop. The other thing is uh, the current wind direction, which is the current direction that this is pointed, and then uh, the current error of the autopilot. So the, remember, the autopilot was set when I uh, set pin ten or pin eleven. When I powered pin eleven, it locked in the current heading as the desired heading. Um, so it's just spitting back an error, and any time the error goes over the value of two, the actuator begins uh, moving in its uh, either extend or retract direction based on the code. So you know, here I have listed all my variables. Um, I have all my pin function set, uh, my serial monitor begin, and then uh, my loop. So basically reading the anemometer, um, printing the current wind direction, and then uh, my first if statement, which basically says if the autopilot set is high, then set my autopilot heading to my current wind direction and then print that current wind director, current autopilot heading. Um, then I'm having a print loop just to tell me that it's moving through the code. Then uh, I have a calculator here, basically calculating the autopilot error, which is the difference between the autopilot heading and the current wind direction in absolute value. So even if it's a negative number, it will uh, return a positive. And then I'm having it print out my autopilot error. Next, I'm going uh, basically my first if statement for controlling the actuator, which is if the autopilot engage is high and the current wind direction is greater than the autopilot heading, then I'm going to retract the cylinder. So uh, these relays are actually set on if they have power, they are not active, and if they have ground, they are active. So these, these pins need to be grounded to activate the specific function. So you'll see here that retract the cylinder is set to low and extend is high, which means the cylinder will be retracted. And then uh, next is if the autopilot engages high again, but the current wind direction is less than the autopilot heading, then we're going to uh, extend the cylinder. To less than or equal to two, don't do anything, just sit there and wait. Um, and then I have a delay of half a second here just to keep the relays from fluttering because these are not solid state relays and they can't handle you know, super high frequency. So um, the final version will have some solid state relays, which I have back in my shop in Houston. So I will be uh, putting those on whenever I get them. But for the time being, this is working for uh, testing. So anyway, I hope this code kind of helps you guys if you're uh, looking at replicating the project. But uh, it's a very, very simple code. Like I said, I threw it together in less than an hour. Hope you guys enjoy this episode. And uh, with us uh, being stuck at home, we'll probably get see more episodes more frequently here in the near future. If you enjoy our videos, please like, subscribe, and share them with your friends.